How does seeing the sun make you feel? What do you think about? Do you think about puppies playing on a hot summer day? Do you think about the ocean slowly coming in, tides rolling? Does it make you want to dance and bask in its warmth? Do you want to play with family and friends and just have a great time? Or do you see all of the many flowers and colors that it brings? We're going to learn about the sun today and why it is as important as the air that we breathe. Hey scholars, and welcome to our next lesson in weather. Our subject today is sun and temperature. I'm Miss Avery, and it's my job to bring you all of the hottest facts about our subject. Before we begin, though, I do want to make sure that you have all of the materials that you need in order to be successful. That means that you will need a pencil, two sheets of paper, and your video worksheet. A pencil, two sheets of paper, and your video worksheet. Now, I know that it takes time to get all of those items together, so I'm going to give you 25 seconds to gather all of your materials and get back here to our learning experience. Again, a pencil, two sheets of paper, and your video packet. 25 seconds, go. All right, scholars, so we are back. Did you get all of the materials that you needed? You did? Amazing job, scholars. All right, so I guess we're good to go. The very first thing we're going to do is we are going to go over our vocabulary words for today. We are going to go over our vocabulary words for today. Now, there are several words on the list. And then we have additional words that you will need to know in coming lessons, but they're just not pressing for this particular lesson. Hmm, let's see. The first word is temperature. Can you say temperature? Amazing job, scholars. Your next word is thermometer. Can you say thermometer? Another great job. What about the word melting? You got it, scholars. Shade. Great job. Heat. Mm -hmm. And sunlight. Now, scholars, those words are our main words for today's lesson. I also want you to just keep it in your mind 
the words that we also need to know for the coming lesson. Those words are equator, orbit, axis, and rotation. You will hear those words in coming lessons, but for now, we're only going to deal with the first set of words listed here. While we learn today, we want to ask ourselves one question. How does the sun affect us here on earth? How does the sun affect us here on earth? It's activity time. Feel free to pause the picture so that you can do your observations. What colors do you see in the following pictures? How hot do you think the sun is? What else do you see? I will give you two minutes to come up with everything you could think of that you see in this picture, and then I'll meet you back on YouTube. Welcome back, scholars. Did you guys have a good time looking at the pictures? You did. Did you find interesting things that were different in each picture? You did. That is so cool. Did you notice? that in one picture, it looked super warm and super relaxing. And in the other pictures, it looks super cold. Yeah, all of that is a direct reaction from the sun. The sun is 93 million miles away from the earth, 93 million. That's a big number. You may want to write that down. I know for a fact that the sun can send warmth all the way from its body to the earth through that 93 million miles. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I thought so too. Let's see, what other facts do we need to know about the sun? Fact time. Hmm. I wonder what I could tell you for a fact right now. I know. How about this? Even though the sun is 93 million miles away and it is bigger than the earth and sends lots of sunlight to the earth, it cannot heat the entire earth evenly. It cannot heat the entire earth evenly. So here's why it happens. You see, the earth, it's, it's tilted on an axis. And the sun can only get so much of its sunlight, those 93 million miles away. It. I tell you what, this would be better if I show you. You wait right here, and I am going to check and see if I have any of my super, super duper documents that can help us better understand why the earth cannot be heated in its entirety by the sun. Wait there, I'll be right back. Woo, scholars, you have no idea how many people I had to talk to. I mean, 
Jeez, it's a lot of talking in order to get these pictures, but I needed to show you. Now, one of the pictures, it goes by really fast. So if you need to pause the video so you can watch the actual earth rotate around the sun, please do so. After that, I have another video that I think is going to shed some more light on the situation. Let's watch them. Whoa, did you guys see how fast that picture went? I went into my archives because I knew that we needed to slow it down. And here's what I found. The blue square represents the area that the earth is rotating in. As you can see, the area is rotating around the sun as the other planets, but it also lets you know how close we are and how far they are. The Earth rotates on an axis. It does a full turn every blank hours. Do you know how many hours that takes? You guessed it, 24. As it goes around the sun, only certain parts of the Earth can receive light at a given time. This is why half of the earth is dark and half of it is light. The darkness we call night and the light we call day. Now you know. Yay! So, if it takes 24 hours for the earth to make one turn, how long does it take for the earth to orbit or go around the sun? You may need to check your notes because we discussed this in class, although it was a little while ago, but I think you already know the answer. How long does it take? for the earth to orbit the sun? That's right. It takes 365 days for the earth to go all the way around the sun. Good job, scholars. So let's talk about the sun. The sun is 300,000 times the size of the earth. It is also a star. Of the 100 billion stars, it is the only star visible during the day. The sun's temperatures can range anywhere from 7,300 degrees Fahrenheit up to 17 million degrees Fahrenheit. That's really hot. Some of the key components of the sun that you'll want to know are the core, which is labeled with number one. Number two is the radio, the radioactive zone. Number three is the convective zone. Four is the photosphere. Five is the chromosphere. Six is the corona. Seven is the sunspot. Eight is a granules, and nine are the prominences. So, you'll have this in your packet as well as online. Be sure to come back to the video so that you can label these parts correctly. So, let's check for what we've learned so far. We learned that the Earth is 93 million miles away from the sun. But the sun sends energy to the earth from all the way out there. And have you seen the temperatures in the sun? You have. So why do you think the sun is still able to warm the earth?
Yeah, because it's so hot. This is the energy that is giving off. I couldn't imagine being that close. We would burn up. Just the energy is causing the earth to warm? That's amazing. But as with all things, we're 93 million miles away. So can the sun really cover the earth? Is that even feasible? Of course not. It's not feasible. And feasible, let me say that. Feasible means, can it actually happen? Only if we move like super close and probably laid flat. Because what shape is the earth? Right, the earth is round. So as long as the earth is round, there's going to be a front and a back to the earth. And when the front gets light, the back surely can't get light or heat. Well, some heat, but definitely zero light, right? Hmm. So I wonder... Which part of the earth do you think gets the warmest weather? We talked about the sun sending us energy. Which part of the earth do you think gets the warmest of the entire earth? Investigate time. Let's take a look at the picture above. Where does the earth seem the shiniest or where it's getting the most light? Amazing job. So wherever the beam from the sun is hitting the most, that's the area that we're going to get the warmest weather. And this light, shines right on the equator. Remember, the equator is a word that is important, so make sure you write it down. But we'll discuss it more in the coming weeks. So now that you know that as big as the sun is and as strong as the sun is, it can't possibly cover the entire earth with its warmth and certain areas of the earth get higher temps like the equator? Yeah, now that you know that, now we can go a little bit further into how the sun affects the earth. I mean, think about it. The equator is pretty much the center of the earth. The closer you are to the equator, the warmer your weather. This is why in the North Pole and the South Pole, which are the farthest points away from the equator, this is why they are cold. Whereas the closer you get to the equator, let's just say Georgia, the warmer the weather will be. And if you have different areas of land and different areas of water that cover the entire earth, heating and cooling at different times, this causes our weather patterns and our disturbances. Remember, it takes longer for a pot of water to heat up than a pan to heat up. The water will represent the water from earth. Of course, it takes longer for the sun to actually heat it up. The pan represents land. Of course, you can heat a pan up in no time. So imagine how hot the land on earth can get when the sun is shining directly on it. This is why in some areas, 
it gets super hot and popsicles actually melt on the street. In other areas of the earth, it is super cold and water freezes into ice. So, despite the sun giving some areas a lot of sunlight while leaving some areas completely in the dark, and despite the fact that the energy from the sun concentrates and makes some places warm while leaving some places cold, we still need the sun to survive here on planet Earth. Without the sun, our planet would get extremely cold and all living things on it would die. Plants use the sun's energy for photosynthesis, which is the process they use to make nutrients. All animals on earth depend on plants' ability to do that because they eat the plants directly, like cows or humans, or because they eat other animals that eat plants, like cheetahs who eat gazelles, or humans who eat chickens. If plants couldn't use the sun to make nutrients, all living things on the planet would starve. Here's more about the temperature. Different surfaces on the earth, water, and land warm and cool at different rates. Water absorbs heat slowly and releases it slowly. Land warms up and cools down more quickly. These differences in heating are important. They influence the movement of air and water from one place to another, which makes weather happen. The Water Cycle The sun drives the entire water cycle and is responsible for its two major components, condensation and evaporation. When the sun heats the surface of water, it evaporates and ends up in the atmosphere as a water vapor. It cools and rises, becoming clouds, which eventually condense into water droplets. Regardless of what the temperature says on a thermometer, it's always influenced by the sun, which influences the heating and the cooling of the earth. And in essence, that influences the movement of air and water from one place to another, which allows all of the weather to happen. So whether it is sunny with no shade, windy, and cool, if it is rainy and wet, or even stormy and scary, if it's snowing and cold, Though you may not see the sun, it's always working. Thank you so much for coming and growing your brain, and I will see you next time. Have a good day.